All men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night in the dusty recesses of their minds wake in the day to find that it was vanity. But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men, for they may act their dream with open eyes to make it possible. This I did. Lawrence. This young archaeologist, without a day's military experience in his life, became the terror of the Turks, the idolized leader of the Bedouins. And when I met him, he told me he had a price of $500,000 on his head. This breathless youth placed himself at the head of the Bedouin army of the king of the Hejaz, drove the Turks from the Holy Land, and restored the caliphate to the descendants of the prophet. Here we see him, the uncrowned king of Arabia and his Arabian knights. And chief of his Arabian knights, the son of King Hussein of the Hejaz, the Emir Faisal. Faisal gave Lawrence his famous white robe, made from silk the emir had intended to wear at his own wedding. I saw him present Lawrence with his own rifle as a token of his gratitude and love. Together, these 20th century crusaders sweep back the Turks on the plains of Sharon, where the Muslim horde of Saladin vanquished the flower of feudal chivalry and march at last triumphant into Damascus. The wild sons of Ishmael regarded the quiet, fair-haired leader as a sort of supernatural being who had been sent
So much for Constantinople. Yes, the French have their teeth firmly sunk into the entire Ottoman Empire. Is it lunch? No. One more item on the agenda, I think. Oh, what's that? I think we should examine... Lawrence. The Who? The Arabs. Which Arabs? Well, that's the point. <laughs> there would seem to be a number of options. I really can't see why we need to consult with this man Lawrence at all. What we want from the peace conference is straightforward British control. But it may be necessary to have the facade of an Arab ruler. Yes, of course. But why Lawrence is Arab? But why Lawrence? There are other Arabs, and there are other Arab specialists. Colonel Minert's Hagen? He was in the desert campaign, wasn't he? Minert's Hagen's on Palestine. He's our liaison with the Zionists. We're seeing him and Weissman this afternoon. Well, that woman recommended by the Foreign Office. Precisely. Gertrude Bell. Ah, yes, but um, Lawrence took Damascus, didn't he? We are obliged to listen to what he has to say. It was an absolute disaster that Lawrence and Faisal were allowed to get to Damascus first. The behavior of the king was an outrage. He refused to accept his medal. Colonel Lawrence. Do sit down. I'm sure we all welcome Colonel Lawrence to the Eastern Committee of the War Cabinet. Indeed we do. <clears throat> His Majesty's government would greatly value Colonel Lawrence's opinion as to the peace settlement. The Hashemite royal house under Prince Faisal proved itself in battle. It would prove itself also in peace. So we back the same horse, do we? Or in this case, camel. There are other ships of the desert. Iman, Idrisi. Above all, in my opinion, Ibn Saud. But none who are so obliging to Great Britain's needs. Trade routes, above all to India, Lord Curzon would be safe. Indeed, all legitimate British interests would be best served by supporting the Hashemites. To this end, I would like to propose that Prince Faisal heads a delegation to the peace conference in Paris. British interests, best business. I really can recommend him to your lordship. Faisal. Malleable, then? In the right hands. Yours? Arabs deal best with individuals. And what would the Emir Faisal get for his selfless service to Great Britain? No more than we have promised him already. Syria. I really do feel <clears throat> You make no mention of the French. The French can also be said to have expectations in the Near East. Assyria, in particular. And the French are our allies. <laughs> so are the Arabs. The Emir Faisal would, of course, be completely at liberty to choose any foreign advisers he wants of any nationality he pleases. I find it most reassuring that both the Emir Faisal and Colonel Lawrence have British interests uppermost in their minds. Thank you, Colonel Lawrence. Thank you, sir. Luncheon now, Louis. Oh, are they catering for us here today?
Yeah. It is only dangerous if you move. You try. After all, the handle is set with British gold. Ah, merci. Nous allons dîner, Laurence. No, oh, too late. Hajas, un pourboire pour le garçon. Et merci. It is strange sitting with you on merci. a train when we spent all our time blowing them up. <laughs> El Orens, wrecker of engines. Wrecking engines was easy. I had to tell lies about you to get you here. It is not the first time. And perhaps it will not be the last. What matters is you got me here. Paris. Together, we will be irresistible. Why on earth are we stopping here? Georges Dumont, secrétaire particulier du Premier ministre Romanceau. Malé à la mer, à las Malahou. Dao. Pata. Emir Fezal. France has no information concerning the official mission with which you are charged in Paris. An alert to the French. Consequently, it is undesirable for you to continue your journey to Paris. Fadda. I think there's been a misunderstanding. The Emir Faisal is here by invitation of the British government to represent his father, the Sharif of Mecca. Yes, but I repeat, France, is... France has not been informed of the Emir's mission. Perhaps you would translate that. Eddie Dyson, Georges Dumont, of course. It's a great honor to meet you. The honor's entirely mine. Allies in the peace as in the war. Yes. Colonel Lawrence, we must talk. Yes. In private, please. It's cold. Uh, be more comfortable. Monsieur Dumont, I'm sure you'll understand. Ah, oh, that's much better. We have to return to Paris at once. I can't leave Faisal. It appears we've been uncoupled already. Lord Curzon has much more on his plate than the plight of the Hejaz delegation. He's briefing Lloyd George for the preliminary meetings with Clemenceau and President Wilson. And then there's the additional problem. Who exactly are you? What exactly are you going to do in Paris? And by whose authority and in whose name will it be done? We must define your role. We have to know whose side you're on. It's all agreed in London. I'm attached to the Hejaz delegation. What as? As what? Prince Faisal doesn't speak English. He needs an interpreter. An interpreter? So modest for the conqueror of Damascus. <laughs> How will we know if your version is the truth? I don't think it's only my integrity that's in question. I believe I knew your father once. My father? It's obviously the same man. He only gave me one cipher. Ooh. And that one is completely hopeless. And the French are intercepting our telegrams. Oh, how did you know? Oh, because we're intercepting theirs. Excuse-moi. Uh, which hotel of the Americans? Uh, Colonel Lawrence. Lawrence. Well, have you talked to in Paris anyway? Stop. Could you see Much you? better, do you? Yes, hold on, please. I'm dealing with Colonel Lawrence. 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 Lawrence
Lord Curzon is in, please. His Lordship's a sweet six. Have you got any luggage? How's your room? Freezing. Oh, no metro, no taxis, no coal, no lift. Any moment now, no electricity. <laughs> Look, Gertie, it's Lawrence. Yeah, Lawrence, top floor. I'm afraid there's no bath. Excuse me. No bath, hardly VIP. <laughs> I'm Darling boy, how nice to see you. Hello, Mr. Thank you very much. I'm advising on the Jews, Gertie's on the Arabs. What are you doing here? Oh, uh, just a bit of eternity. <laughs> we haven't run across each other since June. <laughs> We call you Colonel Lawrence. Last time we met, it was Captain, wasn't it? I got Alan to bump me up so I could come home in what style, that's all. Uh, I'm off this one, I've got to rush. I've got a rendezvous with Curzon. You'll have a long wait. In six months' time, I do assure you. My name is George Nathaniel Curzon. I am the most superior person. My clothes are neat, my hair is sleek. I dine at Blenheim twice a week. It's going to be a long running show. Yes, looks like it. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night, Captain. Thank you. 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 Oh, good Lord. I'm sorry, sir, but I had to see you urgently. Did you indeed? Well, you'd better come in then. Whiskey, Louis? Thanks. Uh, no, thank you. Well, what is it? Faisal's railway carriage has been stopped by the French and kept in a siding outside Montdidier. Faisal. Mm. Faisal and his entourage are all still inside the carriage. We must leave it to the French. The French won't recognize his diplomatic status. So I'm told. You must insist that they do. Must. You agreed to it, sir. Very well. Would you, Louis? Well, you know the sort of thing. HMG vastly in debt to La France. If she can see her way clear to permit Hejaz's delegation, from whom she has nothing whatever to fear, into whatever billet she may have been kind enough to provide. I don't know, have your drink first, old chap, for God's sake. Thank you, Lord Curzon. Colonel Lawrence. Make it quite clear, won't you, to Faisal, that the very last thing we want at this conference is to ruffle French feathers. The French cock and the British bulldog. I'll try and explain, but I'm not sure it's possible to render a cock and bull story in Arabic. <laughs> I suggest that you try. Very hard. Yes, sir. Good night. I do hope we made the right choice. Bonjour, monsieur. Mr. Don, now I've managed, with some difficulty, I may say, to fit you in a week on Thursday at the Quai d'Orsay. Right, now the black man. You have the opportunity to plead your case before the Council of Ten with your deputation at 5 p.m. sharp. Don't be late. They've got a lot on, and they take, if I may translate for you, by all means. Enough will not the other side of the desk. And this one, sir? Uh, no, we don't have any more. Is that all? 
What about... I thought in your case, I'd use one of the more economical dialects of the Homs region. Leave it on the table, right. And 3.30 would suit us better. Impossible. What's next? Now, the Emir's father's title. Anything what about it? Anything well, we've got to get it right, committed, haven't we? And ciphers go to support you. 157740 stroke 15 to HMG. Hussein signs himself Sharif and Emir of uh, Mecca. Yes. Also. No problems with that. But, and it's a big but on the protocol front, 4th of November, 1916, crowned King of the Arabs. The function was not, however, attended by either the French or the British. Now, telegram number 961, Sir H. McMahon to the FO, suggests in view of our treaties with other Arab chiefs, Ibn Saud, the Amman, the Adrisi, etc., it should only be King of the Hijaz. So we suggest for these proceedings, his lordship, Siada, the king, Malik, of the Hijaz. All right? That's French approved, I should add. Inna Abi Min Sulaylat, al Nabiya Muhammad, wa limuta tisamayat sinna, wa ijdayti hum ashraf, Makkah. La yujid laka bunna khafilla ayalam yusawihi fi shiraf. Ma ya watamanuna miyoon muslim mutifikuna ala dalik. أمير مكة يرجع إلى الأباسيين تكون غبي وأحمق لو تتصور أن عامل هذا اللقب يتعمل كثيرا إن دفتر إلا يهي لقب ملك أو أمير رئيس أو حمار My father is the descendant of the Prophet Muhammad and for 900 years my ancestors have been Sharifs of the Holy City no other title in the world compares in splendor. 180 million Muslims share this view. The Emir of Mecca goes back to the Abbasides. You are an impertinent fool if you think the bearer of such a title cares in the least if you call him, in addition, king, emperor, president, or donkey. Sir, I cannot find that file anywhere. Right. 3.30 it is, then. Thank you. I searched the Arabia room from top to bottom, but it's just sitting up there. And it is hard. Thank you for inviting Colonel Lawrence Winston. Is that him? Yes. Oh. No, he's actually quite brilliant. His exploits are epic. And when you're with him, you have such great talks and make vast schemes for the government of the universe. <laughs> you two are bound to hit it off. He was just a boy on a dig when we first met. Now look at him. He had that rare trick. Did you hear what Colonel Lawrence did at the investiture last month? He refused the CB and the DSO. Colonel Lawrence's conduct was most wrong. Not fair to the king as a gentleman and grossly disrespectful to him as the sovereign. I believe Colonel Lawrence was drawing attention to the Arab cause by his refusal. Any man may refuse a decoration. Any man might, in refusing, state the reasons of principle which led to his action. But to choose the occasion when His Majesty was actually about to perform the gracious act was monstrous. My action was prompted by a burning sense of shame at the likely betrayal of the Arabs by the very country in which they had placed their trust. It was not mine. Oh, no, 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 Miss Bell, please, no. Colonel Lawrence, have his say. So we're all vastly intrigued. I simply felt, therefore, that the king should be made aware of what was being done in his good name. I was not aware of the depth of passion seething in the Arab bosom. Indeed, so great was the pressure of war, so vast its scale, so demanding the great battles of France, that I was only dimly aware of the part played by the Arab revolt in the desert. I very much doubt that the Secretary of State for War's existence was of any consequence at all to the Hawetat. Agail or Otaiba warriors. And I was even more dimly aware of the part played by Colonel Lawrence in that revolt. 
It was nothing. Nothing. How long were you actually in the desert? I dined last Lawrence. night at the Majestic, George. It seemed to be made entirely of onyx. What have you been writing, Lawrence? About me? Just jottings. I left my war diaries in Cairo. Ah, the war. The war was so much clearer. Is this all as you would expect? Is this how it is in Europe? What? This... waiting. Go oh, that. Diplomacy. Our time will come. I drew these tides of men into my hands and wrote my will across the sands. <laughs> I drew these tides of men into my hands and wrote my will across the sky in stars. <laughs> I drew these tides of men into my hand. I loved you. So I drew these tides of men. It has come to our knowledge that certain promises your government made to the Arabs during the war may be at variance with the understanding arrived at in private between our two nations with regard to Arabia. To the Arabs, you promised Arab independence. With us, you agreed a division of control. France has every sympathy for the dilemma in which His Majesty's government finds itself. And Monsieur Clemenceau trusts that you will be able to reconcile your contradictory positions to everyone's satisfaction. Please assure Premier Clemenceau of my Prime Minister's unfailing loyalty. Great Britain's alliance with France is the sine qua non starting point. The rest are issues of minor detail. We have never doubted that these minor details can be ironed out. Yalla, yalla. Lord Dyson to see M.F. Faisal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, very good of the French to try and make the Emir feel at home. It's very, um, very Louis Baghdad. Yes, the Ministry of Reconstruction paid us a visit, please. Ah, oh, salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Oh, the Emir looks absolutely. Le lubistu mithil al akhareen. Sayu ayam al mithil al akhareen. ليس كهامجي أنا نروي أرض دي البدلة لأزهر في مجلس لا شرع ردا. If the Emir is dressed like the others, perhaps he will be treated like the others, not like a savage. He will be wearing this suit for his appearance at the Council of Ten tomorrow. Ah, I fear you've been postponed. Why? It's the French, isn't it? They want Syria. Well, there must be give and take. The Arabs fought for their freedom to get rid of empire, not acquire it, and freedom for the whole Arab nation, not pieces of it. Oh, indeed, they did, did they? Your Majesty, HMG is eternally in Colonel Lawrence's debt for harnessing the Arab revolt so efficiently to our war effort. Hmm? 
especially considering he was aware all along of the Franco-British agreement to divide Arabia into spheres of influence, the French in Syria, ourselves in the lower extremities. Don't let's pretend that there's anything new in any of this. We've all known about it for years, haven't we? Of course, I leave the interpretation of what has been said entirely up to you. Any such agreement was nullified when Faisal marched into Damascus at the head of the Arab army. I'm not sure the French would agree with you, Colonel Lawrence. Then they must be made to, Lord Dyson. I shall have to see Curzon again. Lord Curzon has gone back to England. He's acting PM for Lloyd George. Is Damascus really all we have? <sighs> Still up? Mm, yes. Yes, I heard you moving about. I'm right underneath you. Spartan room. Ah, oh, good. You're not losing your coal. You mind if I swipe some? Mm. I've run out. What's your writing? Um, what is this, anyway? Just jottings, nothing about the war. Seven pillars of wisdom. A triumph. You're a tiring little man. Do take the coal. I really don't need it. The whole war was a sideshow of a sideshow. Now we are interpreters for minor supplicants of that sideshow. We are hardly even visible here. A triumph. Oh, thanks for the coal. Sheriff Faisal, why do you feel you have the right to create and rule an independent Syria? I meant I make a new nation to restore a lost independence, to give 20 millions of Semites the foundations on which to build an inspired dream palace. Quand Faisal cite des versets du Coran alors que le colonel Lawrence dit tout à fait autre chose. C'est drôle ça. It's an interesting technique, Miss Bell. What do you mean? Emir Faisal is actually quoting from the Coran. No doubt you will recognize the Book of the Cow. This, of course, allows Colonel Lawrence a considerable degree of freedom. I would be most grateful if you would convey this to your readers. Pierre, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, am I interrupting something? Oh, pas du tout, fais comme chez toi, hein? Permettez-moi de te présenter, Mr. Richard Smithers, Hello. Sheriff Faisal, Colonel Lawrence. How do you do? Lawrence. Really? I didn't recognize you. I mean, we haven't met in the flesh, but... Hell, Lawrence, huh? I've seen you in New York, in the moving pictures. Lowell Thomas is doing a show on Allenby, and you're in it. And you, of course, Lord Faisal. Haven't you seen it? No, no, I haven't. Well, it's a sellout. And I'd say you are the main attraction. Hey, I, I just didn't recognize you, you know, without the uh, flowing white robes and so on. <laughs> the uncrowned king of Arabia. Uh, Pierre, can I just borrow your pencil for a minute? Absolutely. By the way, you really must see the show. Uh, Colonel, could I ask you a few questions? Yes, of course. Thank you, Colonel. Our readers will be very interested. But if you 
He's not going to speak up for himself, and I'm going to have to speak up for him. There are dangers in being seen as Faisal's ventriloquist. The trouble is, he resents thinking. He's bored by his own sense of impotence. Don't lose sight of who you are. Good night. Ah, oh, good evening, Rebecca. Good evening, madam. Is the water hot tonight? with the French, they take their victories very badly. Madame Dumont, the wife of the staff secretary, Mr. Lloyd George. How do you do, madame? How do you do, sir? And who is governing the English while their prime minister is away? Well, she's a very lucky woman. I've heard the PM is hung like the Tour Eiffel. Paris is riddled with it. <laughs> Sir Mark Sykes, he's died with it. And they say it's killed as many people. It's a very it's impossible. Pan European influenza. I can't live in a single society and the desire to do so. The miasma of distrust and intrigue has cleared away. Man is able to say, we are brothers, we have a common purpose. He treats the minor countries very abruptly, but then he treats major ones very abruptly too. He adores objects, We didn't realize it at the time, but we do realize it now. Son Altesse Royale, le Prince Faisal, that we have fils du roi du Hedjar, shérif et émir de la Mecque, Malik al Aramay, la couronne du fier, sion de l'arbre de Mahomet et branche du tronc Kurashi. Even better than the show. They're too oriental for my taste. Oh, I doubt their entry into Damascus made quite such an impression as it. Then it was a coup d'état. No, it's a coup d'état. <laughs> Are we dining tonight? Ah, gentlemen, may I have a quiet word with you? The Hedjaz delegation. Today we have a golden opportunity to apply the principles of self-determination. Prior agreements complicate the issue of principle. Oh, but surely... The principle surely to adopt in this matter is what is best for the Arabs, not necessarily what they imagine they want. The British and their allies, the French, are equally eager to offer themselves up as midwives at the birth of an Arab nation. It seems clear to me that this conference should concern itself above all with selecting which limbs of Arabia each of us should be responsible for. Heads or tails? Shall we proceed? Good morning, Eddie. Monsieur le Président. Faites entrer la délégation des jazz. I feel sure that the council would wish to welcome the Hejaz delegation and its representative, the Emir Faisal. Un instant. With the permission of the council, France has asked to appoint her own interpreter in order to verify Colonel Lons's translation. RT. 
ti. Your Excellencies, when I received the formal order to go to the Paris Peace Conference, I went to my father and asked him for the political documents containing the promises made to him by England, which I had not yet seen. I know, though, that these promises were contained in a letter sent by the British government. My father replied that this letter was in England and that I had no need of it. I offer this as more proof of the absolute trust my father has in the government of Great Britain. Your Excellencies, I, however, would like to see this letter, and I would like its contents to be made known here, for in it I believe there are no divisions, no spheres of influence, but a promise to the Arabs of their absolute independence. Your Excellencies, our cause is this, that all Arabic-speaking regions should enjoy individual independence. Your Excellencies, show us the letter. It predates any secret agreement made between Great Britain and France, and any such agreement was rendered meaningless when I and Colonel Lawrence marched triumphant into Damascus. The Baron doesn't understand English. We are to congratulate Colonel Lawrence on his understanding of the Arabic language. But I fear his interpretation was entirely lost on certain members of the Council of Ten. Est-ce que le Baron comprend le français? Perhaps Colonel Lawrence could provide us with one of his instant translations, only this time in French. That seems a lot to ask, Prime Minister. Avec grand plaisir. Vos Excellences, quand je reçu l'ordre d'assister à la conférence du Père à Paris, je suis allé voir mon père afin de lui demander les documents qui contiennent les promesses que lui avait faites l'Angleterre et que je n'avais jamais vues. Mon père m'a répondu que la lettre se trouvait en Angleterre et que je n'en avais point besoin. Je voudrais vous demander de me faire voir cette lettre, car je crois qu'elle ne fait référence à aucune division et ne fait appel à aucune sphère d'influence. Mais au contraire, une promesse aux Arabes de leur conserver leur indépendance absolue. Vos Excellences, notre cause est celle-ci, l'indépendance de chacune des nations arabes. Notre délégation s'oppose au système de division en sphère d'influence étrangère, car il est contradictoire avec la notion d'une Arabie unie. Vos Excellences, montrez-nous cette lettre. Elle est antérieure à tout traité secret entre la Grande-Bretagne et la France. Et si un traité pareil existe, Il a été annulé quand le colonel Laurence et moi sommes entrés en triomphe à Damas. The point is, the publication of the specific letter Faisal requested would cause confusion and, and considerable embarrassment to His Majesty's government. Yes, and that's the very last thing we all want, isn't it, Colonel Lawrence? We rely on you, Lawrence, to make this plain to the Emir. He simply cannot expect the French to drop all their claims in Arabia.
I'm afraid if you have no influence over Faisal, then you have no use here in Paris. You think you can work everything out in private and win your case behind closed doors, but in the open, in public, I have the advantage of the terrain. But I assure you, uh, President Wilson would greatly appreciate any such sign of cooperation. I know, Vice Minister. Ah, we have a mystery man of the, the desert. desert. Of course, Faisal must be seen. To I very much like to meet him. Of course. Will you introduce me to him? Faisal, would you invite the President to lunch? After the letter has been published. Till then. Good morning. Can last. Okay. May I present Madame Dumont? Madame. Enchanté. And Monsieur Dumont is advisor to Premier Thomas, sir. Ah, yes. I'm most interested in your cause. I, too, have undergone something of a conversion. <laughs> oh, good. On the road from the Damascus. <laughs> Indeed, I've been speaking up on your behalf, coming up loud and clear. Call on me. I'm at your disposal. Madame Dumont. How nice to see you. Lloyd George okay. is leaning okay. towards us. Your, your Highness, you want to hold this still there? That's nice. That's, yeah, can you hold it? Uh, can you, yeah, right there. Can you just hold it there? Just get the hell out of the way. This is just get out of here. That's great, Your Highness. Just just hold it there, right? Ah, that's lovely. Lance. 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 Who gave you the name, Lawrence? I was born with it. Colonel, uh, have you used that uh, dagger often? No, How many... Lawrence! Dalek of mine! What was it he said, Colonel? He's asking me to ride with him. Dalek Colonel, is that the famous uh, Arab stallion that you rode in the desert? Excuse Colonel Lawrence? Me, Hello. Excuse, excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, Colonel, Colonel, is this uh, some sort of contest? Tribes came to my meshless tent, line upon line of their princes, kneeling before me in the sand and swearing their allegiance to me. And at the end of that day, you came to me, and you knelt in the sand, and you swore yourself to me. What have we got from all this performance? You are the talk of Paris, but what of our cause? And of course, they have not produced the letter I asked for. They promised to send an international commission, but they haven't even got round to choosing their commissioners. And I am still not recognized by any of them. Is this all a pretense? Lawrence, think of something to do. You were so full of ideas. I have. Already. <laughs> Good morning, Eddie. Robert, good morning. Have you read this? Lawrence's Arab is supporting Minot's Hardman's Jew. Would that constitute a holy or an unholy alliance, do you suppose? Well, according to this, Faisal, and I quote, would not interfere with Weissman's Zionists in an Arab state of Palestine. What do you make of that? It's very cunning of Lawrence. Very pragmatic for an idealist. No doubt it will gain them considerable support in certain quarters. Quite. No doubt. 
I read your letter on Palestine, Prince Faisal. I was most gratified to see the principles of cooperation being carried out in practice. Lakad kalatu kitabak an Palestin, wajib na kul kam kana ra eran an ara mabede et raun tumaras amelian. Now, as you are aware, the French and the British are prevaricating. They have not yet selected their commissioners to visit your country. But we have. Oh, before we go any further, Colonel Lawrence, I must tell you how much my wife and I enjoyed your show. Oh, yes, it was wonderful. Have you seen it yet? No, I haven't. Oh, a most exhilarating experience. It's an illustrated lecture by Mr. Lowell Thomas. My wife was particularly intrigued by your camel-mounted bodyguard, though a little alarmed, I must say. I personally found it an incredible insight into the Arab revolt. It all begins with a magnificent soprano. She gives her version of the Muezzin's call. The Emir would be most honored if you would sign this in memory of this most delightful meal. I would be very happy to, sir. Thank you. Would you be kind enough to tell me what the Emir has written? I, the undersigned, agree to all Prince Faisal's demands. <laughs> Fadda. Kol. Lorenz al-Hazim yaktubu kitaben. Huwa lam yismah li bekara atihi ba'at. Lawrence is writing a book. Le. The great Lawrence is writing a book. He has not allowed me to read it yet. That's very interesting, Colonel Lawrence. In the desert, you can see fine camels walking perfectly in line. When you go close, you see that they are, in fact, tied, head to tail. At the front of the line, we have put a little donkey. Do you understand any of this? Well, yes, ma'am, but uh, I think it loses a bit in the translation. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I got an urgent dispatch for prison worker Wilson. I, I got a dispatch here for the president that I've got to deliver now. Look, there's a letter here on you. Excuse me, mademoiselle, do you speak any English? Hey, Lito. Can you tell this guy I've got a Good afternoon. You stupid bloody fool. Good afternoon, Ned. Why don't we have tea together? Why not? I do. Even better. Qu'est-ce que vous vous voulez? Qu'est-ce qu'il y a? Il y a un message pour le colonel Lawrence. Son père est gravement malade. Il faudrait que celui-ci retourne tout de suite en Angleterre. Merci. Mais enfin, Caroline, que se passe-t-il Il n'y a que le colonel Laurence et mon père est malade. Il était parti, euh, déjeuner avec le président, mais maintenant nous ne savons pas où il est. 
What were you doing with Dyson? Look, we all have the same aim. It's just, well, your Arabs. My Arabs? It's a terrible shame your Arabs are a little effete. <laughs> Feet? To fight a war? For gold? For an ideal. And gold. The Saudis are the better warriors, purer than the Sherifites. Dyson believes Ibn Saud to be the Arab leader. <laughs> Dyson? And others. We all have our favorites. The desert's like that, isn't it? And I chose Faisal. I knew when I saw him, he was the one. Ibn Saud is the pure soul of the Arabian desert. Faisal is too civilized, too complex. So Faisal doesn't wear his religion on his sleeve. Good. And Ibn Saud is the greater warrior. And who captured Damascus, Ibn Saud, no, Faisal, me and Faisal, and we're winning again now. Well, if you're sure you're out. What I want is that Arabia should become our first brown dominion, not our last brown colony. And I can pull that off with my Arabs. I can do anything I want with Faisal. He'll do anything I say. I know he will. Abu Marid Jidden. Ye Jibantaud, Le Injil Terra. Is here, Colonel Lawrence. I can manage, thank you. We have Churchill on our side now. And the Americans. I'll be back as soon as I can. and make sure it's posted as soon as possible. Oui, madame. Tout de suite. Ah, merci, madame. Eddie? Eddie? See you in a second. Sorry, sir. We didn't see that. I wonder if I could uh, probably for a cup of tea. Well, certainly, sir. Uh, I'm only a temporary brass hat. My name is Ned. Tom Prince. Sprat, sir. Please sit down. You're going to share a little talk with us, sir? Uh, why not? <laughs> Good health. Back in Suey Street soon, then, eh, sir? Yes. So, um, what are you doing here? On our way to Buck Airport, taking some handy pages down south. Oh, yes. We're flight mechanics. 1500s? Yes, that's right. Destination Cairo. Are you interested in aircraft, then? Yes, as a matter of fact, I came across them for the first time in the desert. You've been in the desert, then, have you? Yes, I have. How long were you there, then? A few years. Yes, you'll, um, you'll notice the difference in the air. 
When I was first there, I was taken to a ruined castle in northern Syria. The clay walls of the castle are supposed to have been kneaded, not with water, but with precious oils of flowers, roses, violets, jasmine. But my friend Dahum took me to the windows, the eastern facing windows of the castle. It asked me to drink in the air. He said, this is the sweetest scent of all. It has no taste. <laughs> You'll notice the difference. The press are furious about uh, not being allowed in and having to rely on dry press releases uh, typed out by Mademoiselle from Good outside. Good afternoon, Winston. Afternoon. The last thing we want is the press in plenary session. We've received the geologists' preliminary reports on the Persian Gulf. Have we? Interesting. Very. How very good of you to come, Emir. We were just hoping to take this opportunity to um, clarify some matters. Ah, Miss Bell. Would you be so kind as to translate for the Emir? He greatly misses the services of Colonel Lawrence. Oh, I don't think that's necessary, is it? Sharif Faisal's English is quite adequate. His French is positively fluent. I really do think it's high time to explode this absurd romantic myth, don't you? He hasn't exactly stepped from the tents of hair direct into civilization for the first time. The Amir is certainly a great deal more sophisticated than he has chosen to demonstrate, and quite capable of understanding all the nuances of whatever Lord Curzon has to say. In fact, the absence of his interpreter may well improve communication greatly. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months is with thee. And thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Look away from him that he may rest, till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. For there is hope of a tree if it be cut down that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and put forth boughs like a plant. But man dieth and wasteth away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? No. Oh, I thought he might have been able to help me. Parish records and so forth. Are you a journalist? Yes. I'm trying to get a bit of background detail on T. Lawrence. Uh -huh. he lives near here. Do you know him? I think he's away at the moment in Paris. But you do know him? Not really. Oh, he's here, all right. Father's death. It's a good story. I look forward to reading it. Yes. And there's a show opening about him in London. Isn't there? Red Hot from America. 
Fred, we met in the idol in New York with Lawrence in Arabia. Ned, there's someone here to see you. Oh, Colonel Lawrence, just a few words, please, sir. We could have had this chat earlier on. He's dead. Uh, I just want to ask you about your father. No. Oh, I'll take a moment, just a quote. For God's sake, get out. Is your illegitimacy widely known? I'll be leaving for Paris in the morning, Mother. Have you heard about the Lowell Thomas show opening in August? What did you think of that? What did you think of the part that France has played? Do you see yourself as an Anglo-Saxon hero? I wonder if you could... Wait, I don't understand. Wait, Colonel Lawrence. Colonel Lawrence. Colonel Lawrence. Ah, Colonel Lawrence. Welcome to France. May I have a few words for you? Colonel Lawrence. Colonel Lawrence. J'espérais-vous accomplir ici à Paris la paix. Have you conceded anything? If you've conceded anything at all, we cannot win. If you give up on anything, you give up on the whole principle. The British military presence in Damascus? Only as a temporary measure. What else? They suggested to pacify the French. We allow French advisers in certain <laughs> towns as a temporary measure. You were not there when I needed you. I arrived too late to see my own father alive and left too early to see him buried. What more could I do for you? Anyway, I'm here now. Somehow we've got to regain lost ground. I think I can see how. If I can't persuade my own people, I can try and persuade the French. Good evening, Colonel Lawrence. Good evening, madame. I'm sorry, but my husband is not here tonight. Forgive me, I wouldn't have troubled you if I'd known. Not at all. You'll have to make do with me. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I have spoken I... to my husband about you. He says he knows you. Um, yes. If I could be of any assistance, I will. Um... I believe if I could speak personally with Clemenceau, it would make all the difference. If your husband could help in any way to arrange a meeting. Orange.
Anybody who's seen the things that you must have seen must find Paris very dull. No, not at all. Everybody talks about your eyes. The blueness. Hmm. I was told by an Arab woman they were quite horrid. They reminded her of the blue sky shining through the empty sockets of a skull. <laughs> bon. Excusez-moi. Je vais vous laisser. You know, the danger of being decorative is that you're never taken seriously. But I'm serious about helping you. I, I would appreciate it. Thank you. La deuxième possibilité serait soit le salon de guerre, soit le salon de la paix, ou la chambre de la reine, éventuellement. Mmh. Mmh. Moins que vous ne préfériez la grande salle des gardes. Non, non, non. Entre le salon de la guerre oui. et le salon de la paix. Très bien. Je pense que l'on met Paris ici. Ne pensez-vous pas que le protocole nous demande que la délégation anglaise soit ici plutôt... Colonel Lawrence, for the final act of the Treaty of Paris, I have selected the Palace of Versailles. As an historian, you will appreciate my choice of venue. Hmm? You do not like the French, Colonel Lawrence. I do not like colonial aggression. France's claims in Syria, you must remember, go back to the time of the Crusades. Please do remind me. Who was it who won the Crusades? We will not withdraw our claim. Faisal must come to terms with France. He must accept the French mandate, or he must abandon Syria completely. Faisal believes that would mean slavery for the Arabs and bloodshed in Damascus. You are, it seems to me, a young man who is fond of publicity. But you are not always completely truthful. Tell me, I want to be clear on one point. You claim Damascus by a coup d'etat. Yes. You have made great play of this. You got there first. It is a central theme. The glory of your entry with Faisal into Damascus, which at a stroke justifies all Arab claims and wipes out all French ones. Because you got there first. Yes. There is someone here who disputes that. I understand the significance you attach to the Arabs being first in. But I fear that honor does not rightfully belong to them or to you, as I think you know very well. The facts are these. Faisal entered the city on the 3rd of October. You entered at 7.30 on the 1st of October. But on the 30th of September, the advance guard of my Anzac Mounted Division had already marched into Damascus. The Australians weren't there until the 1st. There were Arab Irregulars in on the 30th. Irregulars? My men fought hard for this moment of glory. At Maccabar, Gaza and Palestine. I will not give up our position as conquerors of Damascus to a couple of marauding tribesmen. General Chevelle, are you quite willing to dispute this matter in public, should it become necessary? I am.
Colonel Lawrence. I need to see Mr. Churchill. It's very important. I'm sorry. He's had to go to London. He flew this afternoon. I see. Would you like me to take a message? Oh, yes, it's true. <laughs> uh, Prime Minister. Ah, Lawrence. You're still here. Still here? Well, I thought perhaps by now you've done all you usefully could. I thought. Didn't Mr. Churchill speak with you? How about what? Faisal, Damascus, Syria. Ah, oh, yes. You've spoken up well. Made a fine case. The conference must decide what's best now. I've come to see President Wilson. Uh, that's impossible right I must now. see him. It's important. He can't see you. Why not? He must. He promised his support. Now I need it. He can't see you because he's ill. Where is he? He's in the hospital. Where? Which hospital? Uh, I'm sorry, Colonel Lawrence. I'm not at liberty to tell you that. Excuse me. I gave the man downstairs some money to let me in, so I could wait for you. I hope you don't mind. Madame Limon, I shall always be grateful for your help, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I cannot respond to you as I feel you'd wish. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's simply not within my power to do so. No carpets with the Creon, either. You have to apply for carpets. You don't just get them. Well, the Serbs have carpets. The Serbs probably bought their own. <laughs> anyway, if the press go on treating President Wilson badly, he's threatening to move the conference to Geneva. Good thing if he does. Well, at least we get carpets at Geneva. I love it. Oh, the 4th and 4th, it works always. Ah, you think it's like that? No, I think it's like that. No, no, look. Bon, ouais. va, elle va avoir besoin de lubrifiant. Tu me passes l'huile Tiens, ouais, rends-moi ça. Je... Seulement elle. Oh, tu connais pas tout ça, ouais. Comment tu fais Comment je fais Alors elle, tu vois, elle peut te dévisser les boulons aussi. Ah, c'est l'expérience, ça. Hein. Celle du café, mais elle a besoin de lubrifiant. Ouais. Change l'eau. Quoi Ouais, ouais, ouais. It's oil. Attention. Petroleum. That's why Faisal is being sacrificed to guarantee British petroleum rights. If the French get Syria, we get the Persian Gulf. Well, if it's Faisal versus oil, Faisal doesn't stand a chance. Can't go home, not now. Ibn Saud is fighting my family. He's threatening the holy cities. There is a ship waiting at Marseille docks. I drive straight there now. Lord Dyson and Monsieur Dumont have arranged everything. I don't doubt that they have. They tell me your meeting with Clemenceau went well. <laughs> Can I leave? Knowing we are making progress at last? Yes. Uh, 
Faisal's gone. I don't know when I'll see him again. Have some champagne. You'll feel better. No. Come on. It'll steady your nerve. I don't drink alcohol. One glass. I won't tell. You know, the first time I saw you was when you came to my tent at Rafa. You stood there with the blackness of the desert behind you, and I thought you were somebody's pleasure boy. You sat down on my bed and said, I am Lawrence. And I said, boy or girl? <laughs> Would you mind if I borrowed your bath? They haven't given me one. Help yourself. Thanks. Have you read my manuscript yet? I have. You don't like it? I dislike it intensely. I'm sorry, I couldn't have been nicer about you. You could have told the truth about me. <laughs> oh, that. The truth. Well, little of the book is the strict truth. It's based on fact, but I made it. So what can you expect? T-E-L, opus fake it. That's precisely what I am, a fake. I'm imprisoned in a lie. My whole life is a lie. Did you know I was illegitimate? No. Yes. My father and mother never married, but we were brought up in a framework of the strictest moral rectitude. No one would ever have known. So, you see, I was born to it, and I have sustained it throughout my life. Lawrence is an assumed name. I've been living under an alias since I was born. Technically, I, I have no name. My father's real name was Chapman. He was an Anglo-Irish aristocrat. My mother came to his family as a governess. Suppose they must have been in love. I find it hard to imagine, don't you? I mean, the coupling. It must be all the unborn children that make our flesh itch. Good Lord. What on earth are those? Oh, well, I was, uh, I was dragged through barbed wire by a, a camel during the war. It's more like punishment to me. Would you mind closing the door? to do something that will probably destroy me. <laughs> anyway, thanks for the bath. Good morning, sir. Can I help you? 
Yes, Sergeant. I'm Colonel Lawrence, attached to the Hejaz delegation. I know exactly who you are, sir. Uh, good. I have a meeting with Lord Curzon. Prince Fass is away at the moment, and I'm his sole representative. Straight away, sir. Mr. Bratiana of Romania, 3 p.m., and Mrs. Pasik and Trubik of the Serb, Croat, and Slovene Union at 5 p.m. Sergeant, open up the Arabia room and make a note to try and avoid them having too much time in the same room. I've done it, sir. What's next? You've done it. Already? Um, yes. Anything on protocol in here? Why? Including the committee. Oh, for Colonel Lawrence, sir. He's meeting with Lord Curzon. Well, two or three days, I imagine. Ah, well, when one done collects the government, it's more than a mirage, I suppose. He was here a minute ago, sir. Could you post this for me, please? I don't understand. Leave it with me, sir. Oh, oh, Colonel Minot, Sargon, left this for you, sir. Lawrence. Ah, you're back, as you see. With an invitation to lunch. I know how they hushed you up. Oil. Oil? Well, you've had your battleships converted from coal to oil, haven't you? Well, there are many kingdoms in Arabia. Faisal doesn't have to have Syria. I gave him my word. You can't expect to get anything done here. Everybody's far too busy devising a degrading ceremonies for the Germans. No, afterwards. After the show, then we can really put things right. And you are that rare thing, an enabler. You make things happen. I want you with me. Come and have lunch. You know the others, I have my eye on. <clears throat> I've done something you'll hate, all of you. What? All I'm doing is inviting you to serve your king and country. It becomes so much simpler then. After this is over, all you'll see of me is a small cloud of dust vanishing over the horizon. Perhaps when the dust has settled, One thing you should know, you three. <laughs> I am the only informed freelance European. I swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty, King George V, his heirs and successors, and that I will, as in Buximu Belehi al Lazim, an Akuna Haithu Takun, wa an Asira Haithu Tasir, wa Allah Akhda Lil Latrak, in person, crown, and dignity against all enemies. And will observe and obey. So where unkerna Baghdadi, Al Halabi, Suri Al Badawi, 
his heirs and successors and of the generals and officers set over me. You've written a letter which includes specific extracts from secret correspondence without authority of any sort in order to further a cause which you know to be contrary to the national interest. This is the act of a traitor. You have performed the function of an enemy spy. It has put you beyond the pale. Lord Curzon cannot bring himself to see you. Like us, he is deeply hurt. Unlike us, he's also surprised. No punishment, in my view, would be sufficient. Do you have nothing to say? The only informed freelance European. You're not the only one. You're not informed. You're not, judging from this letter, European. You've turned on your country and your race, and you have betrayed your religion for heathen aliens. I know something of the stigma the connection with your father has brought my family. The shame in which he lived and the circumstances of your birth. This act of yours confirms your illegitimacy. You will cease all contact with Faisal, and you will refrain from any further campaigning. I would ask for your word if I thought it would do the slightest good. You will resume your academic studies at Oxford, where you will be offered a fellowship just as soon as the army have demobbed you. Try very, very hard to disappear. Where is Lawrence? And Lawrence has no part to play in the affairs of state anymore. He is in Oxford, continuing his researches into the antiquities, ethnology, history, ancient and modern, of the Near East. <laughs> Forgive me. Do you understand my English? I understand perfectly. We have become an academic study. 
Welcome to England, sir. Can we have a few questions? I am here on the urgent invitation of His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, to discuss the situation in Syria. Will you be seeing Colonel Lawrence? Uh, will you have time to see the show, sir? What show? The Royal Command yeah, performance. performance. I am here to discuss yes, the situation Arabia, in Syria. The uncrowned king of Arabia. Do you what do you think, think, think of Colonel Lawrence, sir? He's a genius, a but not for this age. Ah, uh, for a past age. On the contrary, for the future. A hundred years, perhaps two hundred years from now, he might be understood, but not today. Yes. If you'll excuse me, please, Jeff. If we could just have another word with you, sir, um, please. Yes. Uh, uh, possibly you could... I hope you'll find your stay here pleasant and comfortable. Have you called for the police? He hasn't done anything. Yes, well, we can't have really Tom, Dick and Harry in London uh, cluttering up the Carlton saying he's Lawrence of Arabia. Lawrence! Alhamdulillah, ala kahuna ahiran. Kafala khanda. Alhamdulillah. Aangala niya faisal. Memhuna, dafadal. I've been writing a lot. I've brought it to you. I'd like you to read it. It is finished? Yes. I have been thinking what I can give you. No, please, please, I have... No. I have it. I shall give you the archaeological rights. You know that I have... The exclusive archaeological rights in all my kingdom. That would be very special. However, I think I'm about to be deposed. Why were you not there to meet me? I was ordered not to see you again. So, they did not break you? No. They are frightened of us together. And we are together now. Yes. I do not believe you could have done more to help me. It's not over. No? No. We wear fond together because of the sweep of the open places, the taste of the wide winds, the sunlight and the hopes in which we worked. The morning freshness of the world to be intoxicated us. We were wrought up with ideas inexpressible and vaporous but to be fought for. We lived many lives in those whirling campaigns, never sparing ourselves. Yet, when we achieved and the new world dawned, the old men came out again and took our victory to remake in the likeness of the former world they knew. I hear the American show has come to London. Yes. They are watching us. Lawrence of Arabia. I know. The uncrowned king of Arabia. Yes, I know. It 
is a title that suits us both. It's not over.